Hi everyone, this is Anna with Scrapping, Stamping, and Stuff. I'm here today to show you everything you need to know about the Stamparatus. This is an amazing tool that Stampin' Up! came out with a couple years ago now, and I have never done a video just on the Stamparatus for whatever reason, and it has been overdue. So today, this is what we are going to talk about. So I want to talk about some of the features of it, then I'm going to talk about how to use it, some special things you can do with it, how to take care of it, how to store it. We're going to talk about everything you need to know to get started with the Stamparatus. So this is a stamping platform. It allows you to do precision stamping in perfect alignment with your stamps. So what you do, you mount your stamps onto these plates. It comes with two of the plates. So you mount them on, you can stamp it. And because this is always gonna bring the stamp down in the exact same spot, until you remove it, of course, you can repeat stamp if needed. So if you mess up your first try, if you want it to be darker, for whatever reason, if you wanna stamp it a second time, you can do that in the exact same spot. So this is a very cool tool for beginning stampers learning to stamp or anyone with unsteady hands. I've heard of a lot of people and I have a customer who has tremors. This tool has allowed those people to keep stamping after it isn't really very possible for them anymore. So. It is also perfect for all of you average stampers out there who are not average, but uh, you know, you can use it for so many different things and it just, it brings your stamping to a whole new level. It allows you to do some different techniques. I'll share a couple of those today and then I'm going, I'm planning another video for later on to highlight a lot of those techniques. And if you're doing multiples of a card, such as your Christmas cards, this can allow you to do lots of multiples in a short amount of time. So let's get started talking about it. Let's look at the different parts of the Stamparatus to start. So let's look at this base here. You can see the grid across it. This is really nice to help with alignment if you're trying to measure or get your paper lined up in a certain spot. So you have the grid. You also have the ruler on the bottom and the side which is nice. This base is magnetic, and I'll show you the magnets in just a moment that we will use with it. It comes with this thin foam mat, and this mat is recommended for use. You will definitely need to use it anytime you are using any of our photopolymer stamps, the clear ones, because these are not as thick as our rubber cling stamps. So you need that extra depth for the photopolymer. So you need to use your foam mat with these. You do not need to use it with these red rubber stamps, the cling ones. But honestly, in most cases, I leave my mat in here all the time and find that it stamps fine with all of my stamps. We also have a deluxe foam mat that you can purchase if you're interested in this. This one is a touch thicker. I don't think I'm making that up. I'm pretty sure it's a touch thicker than the one that comes with it. It is also covered in like a laminate plastic type material. So this one is really nice because if you stamp on it, you can wipe it off. You can grab your Stampin' Chamois, which is my favorite tool for cleaning the Stamparatus wipe it off and you're good to go. It doesn't get ink on there permanently like it would on the foam mat that comes with it. So this is the deluxe foam mat. I'll also show you we have small grid paper. If you've ever used Stampin' Up's grid paper, it's amazing to put under your projects. It's great because you can use it to help measure. If you make a mess of it, throw it away and um, you know, grab another piece. So we do have our small grid paper. These are perfectly sized to fit in the Stamparatus, the seven by seven inches that you get with the base of the Stamparatus. It is double-sided. We have inches on one side, centimeters on the other, and I really like to use this in the base of mine as well. A lot of times you'll see that in my videos that I'm using the grid paper. Okay, now let's flip this over and look at the bottom. 
So here's the bottom of the Stamparatus. It's got non-skid feet on the corners and spots for two big strong bar magnets. Now when you get these, they're going to be silver. They're not going to be covered in orange washi tape and they'll be mounted right there. I find in a lot of, you'll see this a lot of places, people like to wrap these in some kind of tape, washi tape or painter's tape or some kind of tape, leave the edges hanging off. This serves two purposes. One is, and here, here is kind of a very important tip for you. I strongly suggest that you never ever use both of these on the surface of your Stamparatus at the same time. And the reason is they are so strong, they pull together and find each other. They will snap together and they can break. Um, I've heard of quite a few people who have had that problem. These, I mean, these are hard for me to get apart. They can be several inches apart on your surface, find each other, snap and break. You do not want that to happen. You want to protect these. So I wrapped several layers of washi tape around there. So for one, it will soften the blow slightly if for some reason these ever do find each other and snap together on my work surface. Also, the little flaps are nice because it makes it easier to pick these up off of the Stamparatus. Now that I've shown them to you, I'm going to tell you that in most cases, I honestly don't even use my magnets. I find that I don't need to. And I'll show you how I stamp here in a minute. But I do, for certain projects, I do pull them out and they are very helpful. Now let's talk about these plastic plates that you get. So it has two plates, one on each side. People orient this differently. Uh, I like to use mine with the plates on the right side and the top. If you're left-handed, you may flip this around. But it's got the two. They have these hinges along the sides and that holds them in place so that you can rotate this over, stamp exactly where you wanted to, rotate it back. These do have a grid etched into the surface. I'm gonna try to align this so you can see that grid. That can help you with aligning your stamps. It is nice that it's etched into the surface. Uh, you don't have to worry about it scratching off or coming off from some kind of cleaning product that you're using. These plates can be used to mount stamps on both sides, so they're double-sided. I'll show you in a few minutes why that can be helpful. And you definitely want to know how to lift these out. Uh, I was doing a class a few weeks ago and they were supposed to lift this out and flip it around. And I had a few people who weren't sure how to do that. So you bring your plate so that it's straight up and down. And I apologize if the camera gets blurry, but you bring it straight up and down. And at that point it will lift out. So you want, and you want to put it back in, make sure it's straight up and down and We'll go slide it back down and you can lay it back down that way. Here's a little tip. Some people don't like that this doesn't lay level because it here it's a little bit higher than my mat. Well, down here on the edge, it is on my mat, so this doesn't lay level. So you can put your stamp case, whatever stamps you're using, lay a stamp case under there, and that helps keep it a little bit sturdier, keep it from wobbling, keep this nice and level. So that may help you. Okay, I will mention this as well. It does have the two plates. I will show you why that is helpful. But a lot of times, if I am just doing regular stamping without a lot of stamps or many steps, I take my one plate out and I just use the other one. I find this is a little bit easier to manage. I don't have this extra piece up here bumping into things and causing issues. So this is kind of the way I use mine in most cases, unless I need both of those plates. Okay. looking at my notes because I will forget things without my notes. We have talked about all the basics, so let's get started with how to stamp. So I am going to put my deluxe foam mat in just because that is the one that I usually prefer to use. And I'm gonna slide my cardstock right up here into the corner. 
if you want to for certain projects, you can align your cardstock out here somewhere, but putting it up here in the corner guarantees that you can repeat stamp this multiple times and get it in the exact same spot. So now you want to line up your stamp and for this one, I'll, I'll show you as, as instructed with the directions. So since this is a rubber stamp, I'm actually going to get rid of that mat. So I'm going to line this up where I want it. I could put it down here, 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 wherever I want. Put it right there in the center to mount it to your plate. You bring it over, just give it a press right there. Lift back up. It is now mounted. And to ink these, you can absolutely use your regular ink pads, which is what I normally do. I have heard from several customers who prefer to use ink spots, the little ones. And I will definitely admit these make it easier to manage. So I'll show you what I do with my big one here in a minute. But keep in mind, you can use the ink spots. And that is a smaller, smaller amount of ink pad to handle that can help you prevent from getting excess ink all over the place. So you can, we have an eight pack of those ink spots in our catalog right now. You can also acquire those ink spots through Paper Pumpkin. If you're a subscriber, you get one every month. And we, I believe, still have uninked ink spots as well that you can ink yourself with the ink refills. So I'm gonna use my regular ink pad just to show you that this is definitely doable. You have to learn not to tilt your pad. If you do, you'll get extra ink over here on the plates, but never fear, it doesn't matter. If you, I have had lots of excess ink on these plates at times, and never once has it ended up on my project, so I just don't worry about it too much. So I inked it, I'm gonna bring it over, give it a press, lift up, we have a perfect stamp. Now, Let's try that again. Got it inked up. Going to stamp. Oh, darn it. I did not get that ink. I did not get that stamp inked properly. Has that ever happened to you? It's happened to me a couple of times. I'm going to re-ink it. Make sure it's up there in that corner. Stamp it again. Perfect. You would never know that I had to stamp that two times. So that right there is kind of the basis of the amazingness of this tool. Uh, you are going to save lots of cardstock, lots of messed up projects, because you can repeat stamp them. Now, sometimes you want to stamp on the base of your card, and you can fold your card up, lay it on here, and stamp it that way. My preference is to stamp on it while it is still laying flat. And that is one of the things I love about the large size of this and the fact that it's open on the sides. You can put an entire card base in here. You could put a scrapbook page in here if you want to and stamp on it. This isn't going to be in the center because I didn't realign it, but there you go. And you can stamp right on your card base that way. Now, let's clean that up. I'll show you how I clean it up. So I just used my chamois. I wipe this off. And I can pull that right off of that plate. So now, I want to show you one of the other amazing things about the Stamparatus. And this is the fact that you can do two-step stamping, where you're going to stamp like two stamps in the same spot or... You need one stamp and then you're going to fill in with the other one. You can do two-step stamping. We're actually going to do some four-step stamping here. So be prepared to be amazed if you have not seen this before. So I am pulling in some stamps from our Jar of Flowers stamp set. So we're going to have a jar with a bouquet of flowers on top. And then we'll fill in the jar with some water and some stems from the flowers. So I am going to align this flower. You want to figure out where you want it to be aligned. I'm going to say right there. So bring this over and 
I remembered. Let's bring in that mat because we're using photopolymer stamps this time. So bring this over, align it. It is going to stick to that paper sometimes. Just stick your hand in, hold that paper in place and it will stay put. So that is now aligned where I want it. Let's go ahead and stamp that one. I'm gonna use some Memento Black ink here. And I can see I didn't get the center inked completely. That's okay, it's very close. Let's try that again. Much better. Okay, now I want to line up where the jar is going to go down here. So because I'm going to do four steps on this time here, I'm going to use the opposite side of this plate. I'm going to lift it out, flip it around, put it back in, and I'm going to attach my jar stamp on this side. So let's go ahead and stamp the jar. There's step two. Now, I want to put these stems down here in the base. So I'll lay them on where they belong. Bring this plate up. Now, if I had my magnet in here, I wouldn't have to grab that cardstock every time. So that is one benefit of the magnet, if you like to use the magnet. I am going to ink the stems with some Granny Apple Green ink. Bring it down, stamp that. Now I want to do one more step, so I'm going to lift this out, flip it around, lay it back down. I'm going to use this stamp to fill in the water on, water in the jar. This is one of our reversible stamps. If you've seen these, the one side will stamp the outline and those little uh, diagonal marks. The other side, if I want to use it, it's going to stamp and fill in that entire surface area. So that's the way I am going to mount it. Lay it there. Pick it up. Let's ink that with some pool party. Seems like a good color for the water. Bring it down, stamp it, and there you have it. So what is very cool, and I'll do this a couple of times. So if you're doing multiples, let's do that. Let's do, I didn't get that inked all the way that. I'm going to bring a second one in here. Before I flip those around, we'll do another one here. Let's do the jar. Let's do the water. Once again, I can see I didn't get that ink all the way. Now, let's flip our plate around, place around. And we will finish both of these with those other two stamps. So we'll do the flowers. This flower stamp is brand new. I can tell when your photopolymer stamps are brand new, they don't always like to ink up properly until they're cleaned one time. So I think that was why it didn't want to stamp the first time. Stay up those stems. Now I want to point out, can you see I have some excess pool party ink here? I have some excess granny apple green ink here on the plates. It does not matter. It's not going to get on my project unless I smudge it on my fingers and get it on that way, which, you know, that happens sometimes. But let's bring the second one back in and finish it up. So this repeat stamping is one of the really cool tricks. Now I can see right here that didn't stamp and I can see that ink is still on the stamp. 
So I'm going to bring it back, give it another press. I must not have pressed right there in that spot. So that is the beauty of the Stamparatus. This two-step stamping, three-step stamping, a four-step stamping is super cool. And when you do multiples, you can save so much time and get every one of them perfect this way. Now, I want to show you one other trick before we are done. So I need to get these stamps off of here real quick. Actually, I just need to get this one off. And this stamp is from our ornate style stamp set. So this is a trick that you can do with the Stamparatus. I'm going to get rid of this pad again and show you the right way of doing it where you do not use the, uh, the pad. So I'll mount that up and let's stamp it once with some Granny Apple Green ink. see if that got inked right. Stamp it once. Now I am going to lift this plate out and move it down one. Here's, here's some amazement for you if you've not seen this before. I'm going to stamp again. I'm going to lift it out again. I could re-ink that if I wanted to, but this faded effect is one that I really like. I'm going to keep lifting that out, stamping again and again. So I get down here to the bottom and look at that. We got precision placement. That is a really cool technique that you can use on a lot of cards and projects and do, do some things that you wouldn't necessarily be able to do if you were mounting your stamps to a traditional block and just stamping them by hand. Okay, my friends, let me clean this up real fast because I want to talk about storing your Stamparatus, and one other thing, and storing and cleanup. So actually, while I'm cleaning, let's talk about cleanup. I told you that my favorite way to clean up the Stamparatus is with my chamois. If you have not uh, become familiar with a Stampin' chamois, it is a really cool tool, and it doesn't require any kind of cleaner. All you do is moisten it each time you go to stamp and clean your stamps just like I am doing right here. Your stamps and your Stamparatus, because I'm going to clean up my plates with it as well. Let's flip it over, clean that ink smudge off that I had, or clean the stamp off. So this is a really good way to clean your Stamparatus. You do have to be careful about not using harsh cleaners on this. Stampin' Up! recommends that you use a chamois, some Stampin' Mist, which is our cleaner that goes with our other stamp cleaning tool, or like gentle baby wipes. You don't want to use anything harsh on this that is going to etch out the surface of these plates or your mats. Now let's talk about storage. So let me sh see if I can show you something adequately in this video. If you want to fold both your plates in and store your Stamparatus, can you see that that does not fold down level? You never want to force this down level because you could potentially break your Stamparatus and then you'll be sad. So you have a couple of options. One thing you can do that some people like to do, if you uh, want to, you can move each one of these out one notch, and at this point, they do fold together and can lay flat. So you can put this in a drawer, on a shelf, wherever you like. Now, what I typically do is I leave them, I leave the one in place fold it down, and I usually remove my second one, and I just lay mine flat on top with the mat between. I put the mat between to make sure that these don't bang together and scratch each other up. So this is typically the way I store mine. But like I said, if you'd like to keep 
the pleats both locked in, you can bump them down a notch and they will lay flat. One other thing about storage, and then we will be all done with this video, is I want to mention the Stamparatus bag. Stampin' ha Up has a few accessories to go with these. I talked about the deluxe mat. I talked about the grid paper. We do have magnets you can purchase if you want extra magnets. And we have this really nice bag. This is a really heavy duty bag. I've had a couple of bags made out of the same material for a few years. They hold up really well and they don't really show a lot of dirt. This white part you might think would show a lot of dirt, but on my other bag, I, I have not noticed that at all. So it has zippers around the edge. You can unzip it. Inside, you can see my Stamparatus number two. I've got the plates. I've got the mats. I have some of the, the instructions that came with it. I usually keep my grid paper in here. So this is just a really nice bag. It has several pockets and dividers, which is really nice to split up the plates and everything. Make sure those plates don't scratch uh, and add in some extra things if you want to. It does have a pocket on this side with a little snap. And the back side is just solid blue does have these little handles if you want to use them. If you prefer, it has the longer handle that you can use and adjust the length on it. If you prefer not to use this one, you can use the snaps and just take this part off. So this is a really nice way to protect it and make sure that you are going to take care of it and, you know, not have any problems with it, with something happening to, happening to it while you're storing it in the wrong way, I guess. So there you go. That is lots of information about the Stamparatus. Thank you for sticking around and listening. I hope this was helpful. If you have questions or um, suggestions for techniques, like I said, I am excited about doing a video here in a few weeks on a bunch of really cool techniques, kind of like that step stamping to, to give you an idea of other ways you can use this and do things that there's really no other way to do them. So Check out my other videos. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel, Scrapping, Stamping, and Stuff, and visit my blog and do your shopping for your supplies there. Thanks, everyone. I hope to see you next time.